All right. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. If you are watching on the projects page, Game B projects, then you can join the link in the comments if you would like to participate on camera and tell us what your project could have done if it's not yet, you know, most of our projects are in the beginning stages and they're not ready for use yet. So it's like, what could it have done if it was ready right now within this time of quarantine and uh, COVID-19? So um, who would like to start answering the question? The question itself is how could my project help in the pandemic? Yeah, I can start off. Um, so, you know, you can imagine when, when things were happening and this, the answer will be very similar to Adriel's, uh, project, of course, because mine's kind of a sub project of what he's doing. Um, but there's a lot of kind of misinformation, like, and I just had a friend posting today, um, why, uh, when we come out of this kind of self isolation, aren't we going to just have the same thing? Would it be better to get sick now rather than later? And, are we waiting for a cure? Why are we going to come out in two months when the cure is going to be 18 months away? And I think it, it'd be nice to have a resource to where you could have just that top question, we should self-isolate. And then it would have all the reasons, all the pros and cons against it in there, including like, you know, some of my friends were saying, well, what about the economic impact? And their implication was, I don't think it's worth it. I think we need to go and spend money so that our economy doesn't crash. Um, he didn't say that, but I'm pretty sure that's what he was thinking. It would be nice if you had some central place to go that, but instead I'm kind of like regurgitating some of the things that I thought, you know, that I heard and some of my own thoughts and people were just, you know, it's just a mix on this Facebook message. But if I had a link, I could just send them and sure there's a lot of blog posts that kind of have those, but none of them, uh, currently have that decision weighed with all the pros and cons in a, in an easy format to explore. Um, so I think that, and then a whole bunch of the other things that if, as we were making these decisions, we could also have public input on it um, and then have it displayed in a way, the decision displayed in a way that where you can actually see the pros and cons and the relative weights um, that there'd be a lot less, hopefully a lot less confusion and even probably more um, people uh complying with the suggestions like there's a whole group of people that weren't believing anything until someone from their community got sick and was in the hospital for a week and it's like well okay the facts you have are the same you know uh why does it have to be you know so those are the things that of course we're trying trying to fix to where they don't have to have a friend nearly die before they start doing then a couple weeks late doing what they should have been doing in the first place because they simply don't believe what they're being told or well they believe the news organization that's telling them the bad things but anyways so that's kind of my thoughts all right because i can go next uh as bentley said yeah i think there's going to be a lot of overlap between the two um i mean it all comes down to people don't know who can to i talk. just just sorry one second Bentley didn't say the name of his project. It's Reason Score. Also, Adriel mentioned the name of your project. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So, Wiki Lection um, is the name of the the project. And one of the main sort of the the goal has stayed the same, which is to fight misinformation. Sort of how I'm talking about it now is that it sort of helps, I guess, establish a point of trust. Because right now, the average person they don't really trust their politicians. They don't really trust their news sources. And even if you do want to trust experts, if there's 10 different experts saying 10 different things, how do you know which expert to, to, to trust? Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of sort of di different bits and pieces that Wikilection could, could help with. One is sort of acting as like a news aggregate. So it's taking all the different stories about coronavirus and sort of uh, lumping them together and then finding the stories within that larger group to sort of start getting down to, oh, okay, here's, you know, 20 stories that are all talking about what's going on in Italy. So if, if you're now looking at any one of those stories, you could have something like a, a browser extension that says, hey, you're reading this story, just so you know, here's sort of the higher level hierarchy. <laughs> um, here's the, the higher level story and sort of what everyone agrees on. Here's the things people don't agree on. And then here's sort of what the experts who are chiming in, here's what they're saying about that matter. 
and then also factoring in the the experts. So it, if you have ten experts that aren't agreeing on things, it's being able to look at oh, okay who's fully qualified, who's maybe actually made some predictions in the past and they were correct. Um, if certain politicians are are you know saying things, you want to figure out which ones are actually sort of knowledgeable on this, which one like to give some sort of quantified answer to who you can trust and why. Uh, I think that's probably the the two main things is just acting as sort of a source of information, um, I guess, to compare the news to. And then also, I think that, uh, uh, and this is where wake election and recent scores sort of overlap, is trying to actually figure out, here's what all the experts are saying, here's the claims that are being made, and then here's which ones actually have proof that's been reviewed by qualified experts and, you know, where the people who are actually qualified to talk about this and have a history of it, what they're all saying. Yeah, and I, 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 if Jubilee wants to talk, you can just let me know, Jubilee. But I also want to kind of add to that. Do you do you want to go ahead and say yours? Sure. I, I will say mine now that my kid has left. Right. She had an iPad emergency. I'm like, I can't even figure out how to restart this thing. Um, I, my project right now is solution raising. So I started the Facebook group last week. And we just got five under our belt. And I'm now going through them and rewatching them. So I rewatched the one we did on education, the one on food. And this is all, even though coronavirus was just starting in our in our consciousness, we mentioned it a few times, it's now basically we can't talk about one without mentioning it. But every solution impacts this. But even more than that, because of course, just like your projects, those aren't done. We don't have 10,000 people and $100,000. But having people locked in their houses with nothing to do, without hope, and without like, how long is this going to last? Then what do I do about my rent? Having something they can do, a place they can connect with, and actually have conversations that are generative so they can see, oh my goodness, this is possible with $100,000, right? We could have a food app. We could be, like, well, especially the food one. I was like, we need to be growing in our backyards right now. <laughs> like, this needs to be happening during this year now before we have a, how do we do it without the technology? How do we do it without, well, just sharing the knowledge? And same with the education. We don't have childcare. We don't have, our schools aren't going to be back until September at the earliest, probably. So um, even though some aren't quite admitting that yet. Now I have my kid off for five months. I was worried about two months. And it's weird because now there's like this lifting of anxiety where I'm like, yep, in it for the long haul. Like we got to figure it out. It's got to be something that can happen now. So I think during the pandemic, uh, Solution Raising, which is its own Facebook group, is um, can focus on connecting people and giving them hope and something to do during this time of isolation. Yeah, if I can just um, build on that, uh, Jubilee, I think that's great. I didn't even think about a great point that it's giving people hope now. So your project is is providing value. Uh, so I think that's fabulous. And Adriel, for yours, I um, also have to think about the kind of secondary effects that uh, Wiki Elections would provide because if that was in place and if some of the nor news organizations that were playing down the pandemic in the earlier half, I think they would have been more cautious. And not only would have people know not, maybe not to trust them, but also I think they would have been more accurate in their reporting if they knew that there was going to be a record of what they were saying and that people right. trusted that record. Um, so that's, that, that's just something I, I thought of when you were talking and I thought, Oh yeah, that, that, that has a real um, long-term effects. Right, yeah. One of the visualization options that like is gonna have to be in there is some sort of a timeline where it's it's taking all this content of like, for example, the different administrations and how seriously they were taking it. You can then take the videos and the newspaper clippings and arrange them in a timeline to say like, here's the actual, right, here's the actual news and videos and proof of how seriously they are taking it at the different stages. Cause they're all, you know, a lot of governments took a while to react and then once they did made it sound like oh we've been reacting the whole time and we've been we no, you weren't you were saying it wasn't important it wasn't a threat and now you're all of a sudden saying it is which i think we all expected all of the governments to do that but it's actually exactly having that library of proof where now anybody if they want to verify it they can go check a timeline and say no that right there here's the 12 videos of you saying it's not important you know timestamp, and then the final one saying oh it's important i've been saying it's important all along Absolutely. We definitely need some meaning, sense-making, 
apps right now, something yeah. that helps us make sense of this because the disinformation's out there. I feel like the world's waking up to the fact our governments are in no way a solution to most of our problems, yet they're the best we have right now to coordinate and all the grassroots things that are happening that like it costs us to have poor people in our society. It costs us to have people who don't have access to information. It costs us that we don't trust the system. And we can't just fix that overnight. We can't just be like, well, now we can trust the news. No, we can't trust our politicians. We can't trust the news. I can't tell you the number of times, even now, how many days into it, how many weeks into it, that the Canadian government and the Canadian media is like, this many, like now, now this, this city has seen community transmission. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Of course there's community transmission. Like this isn't, this is way past containment and we're into the other side. So of course there's, it's like, did you not think it was the same virus as, and these are our elected officials and sometimes medical personnel that are like, well, now that we know it's community transmitted in Vancouver, now that we know it's community transmitted in Edmonton, now we can start to self-isolate. And it's like, the first case, before the first case, I mean, our, our northern provinces that have way less medical care are taking this more seriously when they don't even have a case yet. Right. Maybe not more seriously, but seriously, nonetheless. Right. We're not waiting for cases. They're not out having Mardi Gras right now. Um, I was wondering also maybe uh, if we can think of any of the other projects that have been shared in Project Raisings, how we might think they might have affected this as well, even though they're not represented here today. Yeah. Although I can't think of any, but. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can think of Cube Spawn if we had it up and running, right, for local manufacturing would um, definitely help with, I mean, and, and with respirators, with things we need right. right now, but also just like, you don't have that worry of like, oh my goodness, this thing I really need that's shipped over from China, where is it coming from? And yeah. so I don't know if you want me to just run them all off or whether you want to talk about cube spawn for a moment, then go on to the next one. But. No, that's Yeah, I think uh, hitting on that real quick. Yeah, I think if we could just, if every city or town had a 3D, you know, it's more than 3D printing, but could print a medically viable, res uh, well, I'm sorry, what were they called? Respirators. Res they are called respirators? Okay. Some of yeah. them. Which is, you know. I don't know if you can just take a garden hose and use that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I think there's certain parts. Like I know, I think it was in Italy, people have been 3D printing them and then the medical, that the, the company that makes those has now been trying to sue them. Um, yeah, we've there's there's patent issues in the US. Yeah. Well, as well, right that now, they're talking about suspending or not or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. That is, to me is going to be one of the more interesting parts of all of this is seeing sort of what companies come out with any amount of goodwill on the other side. Because if you're suing people for printing respirator parts, like you're about to get lynched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That and is ju 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 justifiably too. Like if you're saying, yeah, I, I know that we kind of also partially caused this, but we're going to still need to make money off of saving lives. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> And even if they were like, listen, we also we want to come out of this other end as a company that's profitable. How can we help you in this? And how can we let's say at the end, I want 10 cents per one or, you know right. what I mean? Like something that's like, yeah. like let's an delay actual payment solution so that we yeah. can also. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. But I think part of the problem is that like they can't even figure out how many of the, the people are making like they're completely out of the loop. And yeah, it's been interesting to see some companies actually being like fairly good about things and like giving their stuff for free and like, which, you know, is still be being done from a business perspective, but at least they're trying to keep everything in context. And then some companies just really don't care and they don't even want like one day of lost profit. I was That's critical cool. of Disney yesterday because they had seven days of free Disney plus. And I was like, everyone else is giving 30 days because you know, they're going to be addicted at the end and they still need it. And you're still inside. Right. But I was like, also Disney just lost all of their streams of profit, all of their resorts, all of their, so I was like, Okay, <laughs> well, I get they it. They lost one of their streams of profit, which probably isn't even their, their most profitable. But right? people yeah. aren't going to be buying, you know what I mean? Mickey Mouse, anything, whether online or a box store, or like, this is just not, like, I'm like, I get it. Their one thing is a streaming right. is a streaming service. But still, could you not have enough to give away 30 days? Because then your kid's at home for five months. You're still yeah. going to be streaming Disney if you could afford it anyway. There, I think, is Abigail Disney, is she the CEO or is she just like a shareholder? Oh, I don't know. Okay, because she came out and like called out Di Di Disney because when they shut down, I think it was Disney World, they had like this epic fireworks celebration that was like this massive crowd. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? She like was on record as saying that, that like two newspapers. I think like she tweeted at them or something. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Yeah, I think she's either the CEO or like she's a major shareholder or, or something. Okay. Like, I think she's the guy's daughter or niece or granddaughter or, or something. But yeah. Is, we're going to see all of the ways that, that, like I said, trust. It's not just about my trust. It's about if you trust the media. It's about if you right. trust the government. And that costs me something. It costs everyone something. Because how do we trust what they're saying? Yeah. When one week it's like, we're fine. Just keep your distance maybe a little bit. And you can have 250 people gatherings. But at the same time, we're saying that you shouldn't be having play dates. Like, it's like, one or the other. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. But having a way to make sense of that. And why? What is the math? What What, what is the 250 piece person reasoning? Because then you have 250 people infected by a cough as opposed to two people who then transmit it and transmit right. it and, and figuring that out. So, yeah, no, cube spawn would be a great one to have. Um, I guess digital native. I can't remember yeah, the last one. The education thing. Yeah, that would be having something that is is able to access education or any of the solutions we came up with through an art education uh, solution raising. Yeah, I mean, so a lot that, of people are working on that on education issues right now. A lot of teachers are fumbling yeah. around trying to figure out how to get their courses online and teach kids while their, their kid, you know, the younger kid uh -huh. is in the background and they're trying to take care of their kid and stuff like um, yeah. that. I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking today it'd be so nice to have a f full online curriculum that anyone could use and you could just kind of jump into and then have, you know, video, which is a thing. Some of the stuff we talked about where you'd have tutors, I could come on and, and tutor two or three people at a time or a group of five or whatever. <laughs> Should I see that uh, there is an app to like assign homework and stuff in China and the kids uh, review bombed it with, with one stars to get it off the app exchange or to get it off the app store so that they couldn't it. <laughs> Go, go Chinese kids. That's awesome. Modern problems require modern solutions. <laughs> like I could just downvote this and it's yeah, gone. Brilliant. Like they just got together. Like, I don't feel like doing homework. Math right class like gets it. one star. Oh, what are the other things that we've not done a project raising on, but I have talked about them and they're in the game B space. Um, Harris and Colleen, their project, and I'm going to butcher the name, Ashanka, Ashwanka, something where it's the online and they're out of Utah. So it's like an online um, farmer's market that, that gets the food from the farmers and then distributes it to people. Yeah. And they have trouble. They don't have trouble bringing in farmers. They have trouble bringing in the people. I'm like, don't think you'll have trouble bringing in the people right now. Yeah, no. And they have it in a way that it can be franchised in every city. And having that available now would be awesome. But I also think we need to be coordinating with our farmers to make sure they have enough labor to get the food out of the fields so that when it's ready, <laughs> not preemptively, but like, so that because especially in Canada, we're not bringing in immigrant workers, we're not bringing our migrant workers that we do every single year because they work for cheap. So that what who's going to pick all that food? And there's people looking for jobs, right? And people looking for something to do. So I think a online farmers market, especially since, like I said, there's is franchisable. And I don't even think they charge for it. It's just like an open source software. Here's the process. Call the farmers, call the cool. And now have this this set up is would like I was like I don't have the energy to do that in Vancouver, but now I'm like I really would like to eat in six months. Someone's got to take this on in Vancouver yeah. and every different city. And we have farmers, so how do we actually actually coordinate this? And how do we get the labor piece in there too? Because now they're going to need drivers, and we have to deal with things on a different level. Like even the community kitchens, I was like, eh, can we have community kitchens? I don't know, but yeah, that's it's tough. I can't think of any of the other ones that I'm sure every single one has yeah. a is a possibility in the in the pandemic. Yeah, in the game B space, there's a lot of discussions about UBI and other um, financial models. Which, uh, of course, you know, if we weren't tied to having to work for many of us an hour or you know a, a paycheck to in order to justify living, <laughs> that would kind of ease a few things. Uh, you know, uh, my my son was laid off, and then we're going to have to lay off the healthcare worker that helps my mom. So it's just a chain reaction because he's yeah. he lives with her and pays uh, half the rent, and so she can no longer if he's not paying rent, she can't afford her helper. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of people are going to be uh, struggling. So some of the a lot of the the concepts about different ways of uh categorizing work and you know what what 
what how, how you have to provide an initial income i think would be um would help in situations like this as well yeah and making sure i mean that small businesses make it through to the other end because so many small businesses are going bankrupt and they're not able to pay their employees and they're like, and so there's no job to come back to on the other end and those services aren't going to be provided. And so having a UBI for the employees means, and, and just a pause, a pause on the payments, right? Cause then you can say, okay, even if I'm a business owner and I can't make the money, I don't have to pay my staff. I don't have to pay my lease. I don't have to buy new stuff. And then I can figure out how to get myself fed because I get UBI. And then we can unpause the economy in, you know, <laughs> six months to a year. I mean, I'd love UBI and I love Debt Jubilee, but like, I don't think we can, UBI we can do, but the Debt Jubilee has a lot of implications that we won't necessarily know. And while people are in their houses is not the time for revolution. That involves going out in the street. Like we need people to be rational and calm as they can be in this, in this difficult time. And UBI would help immensely with that as well yeah. as forgiving yeah. some of the big payments like rent and mortgage. Yeah, a lot of those solutions do have a lot of economic risks that need to be figured out. So I'm not saying we need to jump into any of those right away. But uh, as we continue to, to work on those ideas, I'm sure that they'll offer some fruits that the next time this happens, and there will be a next time, and it will most likely be worse, uh, we'll be better prepared, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And with a lot of that, there are, there does seem to be some hesitancy around like, well, we don't want to do anything, you know, this, we don't want to rush. You're like, well, if you don't rush, you're still going to have a bunch of big problems. Like in the U.S. especially, when the, that that cascading effect is way worse than in a lot of the big countries that have universal health care and that kind of thing. Like yeah. our sister very well might, might lose her business, which there's like over 50 jobs gone. I think she already did. Well, yeah, I, I've been, been talking to her and it, yeah, it seems quite, quite likely, which, <laughs> and you know, she's by far not the only one. Like she was working with, 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 with a company that specializes in brick and mortar. Basically any brick and mortar business that's not a grocery store is hurting right now. Like sometimes <laughs> they're already under. Yeah. We're thinking about contacting some of the local restaurants we go to and see if they're doing the takeout or not. Uh, really the homegrown ones, but then I don't know, maybe I should be ordering DoorDash from Wendy's, which is, which I go to about once or twice a week, even though they're a larger corporation, they're going to need it as well. So trying to make those decisions. Yeah. That's the hard part is deciding like which corporations to try to help, even if you don't really like the corporation. Mm, which is like but. the restaurant. Well, we were, I was, like I said, I was rewatching the solution on food and your, your solution, Adriel, for um, using like DoorDash, but having it more scheduled. So, you know, you're getting one at 6 PM. Right. This would be an amazing time for that. Cause they don't have walk-in customers. So knowing I'm going to make 50 pad ties, right. bringing the cost down, knowing that also, listen, if you're sick, don't make our food and we'll figure it out, right? Like yeah. we'll be here when you recover to, to buy it, to, to do that yeah, exactly. but right now, not. Or we can have workers come in or like, no, you're sick, no. Other people will come in and you'll still get your food paid for. You'll still get, you know what I mean? That the restaurants know that they're gonna yeah. be. And as Ernesto just said, like the delivery people are uh, a definite, a risk factor. If, but that also means if you're running a company properly and it's not purely profit-based, you can then take that extra step and say, hey, this is our best, choice because it's either that or people have to go out constantly so we're going to make sure that our delivery people are like super cautious and like you know we're whatever step we yeah. decide that we need to take in order to make sure that it's safe from kitchen to delivery to handoff we can make that, that yeah, and I, I wouldn't call it a high risk contagion factor because it's less than going to a store and it's less than going out and sitting in a restaurant it's still less and well, we got to realize it's it higher in just the fact that like doing they're, they're delivering the contagion to you so if a delivery person has it they can infect 50 people well, all dotted across a map yeah but it i mean with this specific disease maybe not in the other ones it would be hard in a single door handoff to infect someone else because unless there's actually some fluid on the delivery box i mean so like you know if they're delivering in a bag and you take it out of the bag it's more of the cooks that would give it to you than the delivery person um but you know you've got to get food anyways i think it's also though we probably shouldn't rely too much on the information that's out there because the experts all come <coughs> with each other like they were saying for a, for weeks that it wasn't airborne and now they're like oh turns out it probably is 
Well, that's, there's a lot of confusion there because it is not airborne. But um, when they say airborne, they mean technically it does not flow through the air on its own. But to me, if someone coughs and it goes six feet away, that's airborne. Right. <laughs> so uh, the term, there. they're using a technical term and they're misleading people. And that's right. one of the things that Reason Score would point out is you shouldn't go out in public and say it's not an airborne disease because mm -hmm. when you say that the person, to me, that, you know, an airplane is airborne. It doesn't mean. Yeah. 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 Plus, I think, so I think any there's... system that we're designing to handle this, yeah, we can't only design it for the coronavirus or, or COVID-19, right. right? Things are, yeah. that, are that. We need to yeah. make sure that like, oh, okay, because it's a different risk factor, but like there's the cooks, there's the delivery people. There's like, if you're a delivery person, how do you make sure that you're at no risk of getting contaminated from the person you're delivering to? Right. And there's sort of all those... And, you know, maybe that's just a system that you design and it, you know, yeah. goes in the well, back. And then when we say, all right, it's go time, enable it, train people on it, make sure that you verify that they all understand what their responsibilities are and now go. Well, I think they're also like you, the delivery person, you don't get cash, right? You have to pay via credit card, which is going to hurt right. people who don't have cash options. Yeah. But having, um, you, they leave it outside your door, right? And a text saying, hey, go get it. So they're not coming in contact with you or your money. And th so therefore they're going to have a much, they're only going to have the risk factor of the restaurant. If the restaurant is doing 40 meals all at once, you know, it's getting delivered at six. If it's cold, sorry, these are weird times. Like right. you're getting it at six in your neighborhood. So here's how many are getting dropped off and dropping them off in order. And it's, it's just, it's a different um, delivery method. And if we're not, if we have UBI, people aren't as desperate to need to be a driver. So they're not right. going to show up sick. It's actually more of a service they're giving to get a little extra money. And same with the, the cooks and everyone else, right? That it's like, okay, if you can be sick and still get paid, therefore you can spend the time off and we can all be healthier. Right. And uh, then we can design systems that are more about keeping the contagion uh, as safe as possible. And then when there's something happens, right? You find out that your delivery did give you something then you can give that information back in the system. And it isn't about right. bankrupting that restaurant because they were horrible. It's like, how do we get that information out so everyone knows right. that they had it? Right. They, they might need to self quarantine more than just socially isolate and following that, that around, right? To say, right. right, if you're a cook and you come in and you're perfectly fine and you pass it on to someone, it's not really your fault. <laughs> you know, you were right. trying to do, do and, good. And, so. and two, two other points to that. One is we are all going to, it's just the speed that we get it. So right. the fact that delivery people are deployed, that's actually part of the feature. Um, and also there will be people that die because of the economic consequences. Oh, so if we yeah. don't order from these companies, people will die that way too. So, you know, I, we do we do want the right now, maybe not in future um, outbreaks, but we do want it to slowly spread through for now. There might be better ideas, but the current plan is to let it slowly spread. So to have delivery workers just slowly spread it a little bit isn't is horrible. It's not it's not <laughs> it's nice, awful. but but Ernesto doesn't want to have I'm it. Sorry. He just said that he quit 15 days ago because of all the the um the higher yeah. the higher risk of going into yeah. apartment buildings, yeah. and that's part of it is is working with the delivery people and working with the the system to say how do we make you as safe as possible? What could have been in place so you would still be there? Maybe we don't deliver right. to apartment buildings. Yeah. Or you don't do which, cash. You don't do signing for things. <laughs> right. Like frick the credit card things, right? Like we're no longer signing. You have to do it online. That's good enough. We're in a different time. I mean, China, one of the reasons you're able to can is they all just have their uh, QRCs on the phone. That's how they pay for everything. So in every store, it was like scan this, scan this, scan right. this. And so there was no touching either way. Whereas here you have cashiers with plastic gloves on, but they're handing you back and they're doing all this <laughs> other stuff and they're touching your credit card and they're doing it's like, that's yeah. not... Right. I don't want to get sick, but you all share the diseases and bacteria of everyone that I've helped today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in, in, in the US, we still have to sign to for our credit cards. And so everyone's touched that same pen. That like, I need to start carrying a pen. Even for things me. like DoorDash and stuff like that, you still have to No, sign? no, a lot of them you don't. But there's okay. some 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 of the restaurants. So I guess, yeah, not, not for DoorDash. Okay. Well, I was just wondering, because er Ernesto mentioned people signing, and I was like... I mean, it might be a different kind of a deal. Yeah, I don't know Ernesto where you're. Where, I don't remember where Ernesto but is. I think I, he's in Florida. Um, yeah. I think whatever yeah, system it? is in place would probably need to be designed around some sort of a. You have an account, you know. You tell us like your address, your all the stuff, and then 
you would get charged. And possibly even you might be able, you know, to mail in a check or something and then you cash it. Okay, you now have $200 of credit or there's options, but it would be about minimizing contact, especially during things like this. This is one of, um, I think it did come up, oh, during our disease one, which I haven't list, re-listened to, but talking about having smart health devices. And there's one that already exists. I mean, there's many that already exist, but one is a digital thermometer. And so the company that gets the information back to them actually has a, uh, like a map of the United States, why it's only in the United States, I don't know, that shows, like they could, they can say a pandemic or say an epidemic's coming before other people can see it because they can see people, the raise in temperature in certain areas, right? That there's a lot of people here who have it. And Florida is red right now. The rest of the states is orange, but Florida is red right now, which makes sense because everyone went there for um, spring break with all the old people. And now they're going to bring it everywhere back yeah. to the kid because it was their F you to the system. Yeah. And F Florida, your grandparents. Yeah. Their government seems particularly resistant to wanting to do something about this. Like I know all the stories I've been reading are like all the states locking down and Florida be like, we're not locking down. We're going to have a beach party. <laughs> like, But no more than 15 people. On, together or, one, on, yeah. there. We're back we to trusting the experts on yeah, what's exactly. safe and what's not. Oh, there we go. He was working for a pizza place. In, in, oh, yeah. yeah. So like that makes a, sense. Yeah. So changing some already. of how we handle signatures and cash and... Yeah. things would probably help with that situation. So maybe next time, I just had a weird thought. I wonder if people are going to freak out so much when we're going to change our processes to where we don't share as many germs. And there are some benefits to your the standard person's immune system being exposed to small amounts. So hopefully they don't go the other way, but I don't know. We, we need to be the other way, but yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. But, I, I went to go pick up a package from UPS yesterday, and just the shift in like, okay, card down there, okay, put this down. And it was all like trying to minimize okay. touching anything, and it seemed like I understood why he was doing it, of course, but it just seemed so like weird to go through, like this, like very standoffish. Like you stand there, put your card down, I'll look at it, and then like put your slip down, I'll write the number on it. it was. Mm -hmm. To start to have those glass shields like yeah. they used to have in the banks <laughs> and every for... everywhere yeah. yeah yeah and then maybe an infra uh uv lights everywhere <laughs> yeah which if, if that becomes a permanent thing i have the same concern as you bentley like is that too far now because you kind of need some germs like those of us who aren't concerned about dying from it in itself that's actually good for us yeah like to yeah. go and to get sick and to get exposed and to get kind of quasi sick for a day be like oh i just fought something off I do feel, and this is, I in no way want to not flatten the curve, but to actually take healthy people that know that they're 99% not going to have risk from it, put them in, like do the opposite of what other people, and like not like go about your life and just contagion everyone, but like you get exposed to it, you get it, but you're contained. And then two weeks later, you're hopefully immune. You can go about having the economy work, right? Like, and you're like, especially those people who are healthy, but are scared about their finances to be like, hey, hey you're going to make some big bank if you're immune. Right. If you're immune, we don't know yeah. yet. But creating it, in the, but that's a whole other. That's especially like, for emergency workers. Like if, you know, if all of a sudden a whole bunch of people from like a grocery store get sick, oh crap, now what? Like mm -hmm. they can't shut down. I think in two states, they, they just classify group, group grocery workers as, e e as e emergency support mm -hmm. workers. Like, Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's interesting. Ernesto mentioned that they were letting them stay open so that they can sell their inventory. So that's, yeah, that's about a risk balance sort of decision, which, you know, yeah, I may, I, uh, I may kind of disagree with, but it's hard to I'm say. I'm interested just to see if he feels that he can, can, can quantify it. Ernesto, on, on a scale of one to 10, how much do you feel that the people in Florida trust the politicians at the state level, like 10 being the most? So Jimmy, I do think some hand lotion is going to skyrocket. That's what the stock price is. I'm going to go and get oh, yeah. it on. I went shopping for the first time, you know, in like the last two, three weeks yesterday. And like, I probably checked five stores, no sanitizer, no toilet paper, very little hand soap. But actually, lotion, lotion for your hands. Oh, Cause now I've been washing them so much. Have have so dry <laughs> yeah. like, my, my hands are yeah. horrible right now because of how often I've been. And you see how often I touch my face. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I can't. 
that too. Like I'm like, I'm 40 and I've not managed to not like bite my nails or not touch my face or not. I'm like, this is not the time that that's going to happen. I'm try- like, this is life or death for, for, for some of my family members. And I'm like, and I can't do it. So yeah, yeah. it shows that it's not really. <laughs> there's, Sorry? A, yeah. there's a video floating around of some woman who was giving some talk and she was doing it. It was like 20 things in a row, like her going to, nope. And then her, oh, nope. Oh, uh, uh. It was just like two minutes of just her, stopping yourself from touching your face and just the constant oh, ticks of doing that it yeah. was yeah it's, i was thinking we need a little q-tip and a sleeve that you just pull out do your face <laughs> there you slide go. it back in so it's I, and maybe even has a little alcohol in there to, i do uh, think remsies isn't necessarily an idea that we could implement right but we could also oh there we go nine out of ten people wanted most things closed okay. but the ten percent are just doing the complete opposite just to show self-determination. We got, we don't believe you. We don't trust you. It's like, we're going to gather in these big groups. It's the same with in, in Ontario, which was, uh, BC was actually catching up and surpassing because they were doing things. And then like their colleges had St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Yeah. Go ahead if, and a bunch of I'll say about BC, we, we've been taking it pretty seriously. Like our government's actually been talking about stuff and, sh and shutting things down and doing some stuff like, they probably could have done more, but overall, it's been not horrible. Not, not as bad as some other places. Yeah. But um, Common common Planet's plan for their currency of um, being based, it's kind of as dangerous as the debt jubilee. Where like, okay, but it could be something that starts with uh, grassroots and says, hey, no, we don't have that option. They're not giving us UBI. So we're going to make our own cryptocurrency that's based on doing the labor and X amount per day, right? It's RUBI plus, hey, you did delivery, you get X amount of money for that. And now we need to be able to distribute the food, but we'd have to be able to create the food too, because I don't think the farmers are gonna come in and be a part of the, uh, the UBI method when they can make bank on the on the outside. Yeah. And then, yeah, Ernest was commenting about Uber and Lyft should be stopped, which is interesting, because if they're saying don't take public transit, which completely makes sense, because one person does it, you can affect a bunch. But then in Uber and Lyft, it's like if you take away both, I mean, I guess that kind of helps enforce yeah. the quarantine. Like, well, you can't go anywhere because there's no buses and no Uber and no Lyft. Just also Let's there's there's the work. there's people who need to get to the hospital in ambulances and ambulances won't pick them up because they can't like quarantine it. Right. Which is I, like, and so they're like, you drive there. I'm like, what if you don't can't drive? What do you take public transit? Call a taxi? Like what is your option isn't the ambulance the option in that yeah. case like yeah i mean you almost need like maybe a subset of your ambulances to be like all right these are the ones that we're pretty sure are infected even then we'll still do our best to clean them but like these should only go to pick up people for coronavirus if we're picking up somebody for a, a respiratory issue don't send one of these yeah yeah exactly you should have green yellow and red yeah. ambulances <laughs> that are like these ones are clean no one had it and they should still be disinfected every time in case yeah. they did have it and yeah. something, you know, which you don't know. Also goes to the scary part of what do you use to disinfect? Because are we just creating the next super bug right now with everyone slathering on the all the, the sanitizer, you know, that kills 99.99% of bacteria. We're yeah. going to end up with some really strong 0.001% bacteria. Yeah, I think they're mostly back to alcohols. So they're, instead of using the antibacterial, but so mm -hmm. it's less it, Oh, does exactly. that not have the same issue? No, no, no they, there's no, they can't develop an immunity to that. Oh, nice. Okay. Cool. It's more of a physical. Okay. It's kind of like how soap dissolves the, the fat layer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, that's good. Yes. But we also, I mean, I don't think that the viruses and bacteria will evolve to d not die from soap. But there are other things we do that are like the antibacterial stuff that, or the sprays. I don't know what they're using for the sprays. Whether they do get, the more we try to combat it like that. But there's no other choice right now. I mean, that's kind of the best, yeah. the best we have when we don't have a vaccine and we don't have um, treatment options that will that will kill it. And so, yeah. Is there any other of the people who've come on Project Raisings? I mean, I know there are, but I'm trying to think. There's the I'm trying to remember how to do it. There was the guy who was trying to come up with like, I think the models for how to build like the things to let animals survive more in the, the cities. Um, I don't think that's particularly applicable to this. Just because it's more- His, like a, Right, right, right. With the 3D modeling. 
Yeah. Like 3D, yeah. sorry. And like using sort of common stuff, right? Like PVC pipe and, and pot bottles and stuff like that to sort of create these structures to help. I think it was, although I think his was part animals and I think there was a bit of like urban gardening. So the urban g gardening part could be useful. And it's been very interesting to see how when the humans run around, animals have just been taken over. Like there was like the, the, the like the gangs of monkeys in Thailand. There was a thing in I think it was India where the the farmers were you know being quarantined, and so, so some a, a elephants broke into a winery and ate their grapes and drank some of their wine and passed out. <laughs> Interesting. All right, let's see here. We have you. We have Wikilection. We have all being home, which is what you were talking about uh, with the project uh, brainstorming. Brainstorming that could definitely help. Cube spawn. Kind act with Jonas, which is similar to your guys' project. And again, then brainstorming, brainstorming. So, I mean, we haven't actually had that many of them. Which reminds me, we're supposed to kind of have one tomorrow, but we don't have anyone set up for one. And uh, what do we want to do? We could do a project raising specifically on, on um, kind of like brainstorming, brainstorming. What could we do? During, like kind of like a solution raising, but not quite a solution raising. Yeah. So on what could happen during the pandemic? What could we come together and do? Um, or, or yeah, what do people want to do tomorrow? So I'm not sure if this is interesting. One of the things that I've sort of shifted a bit of direction with the whole quarantine thing is I'm now drawing up some plans for like the actual earliest specs for Wiki election. I don't just be paying out of pocket for like the first version to 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 be uh, coded during all this. I'm also <laughs> kind of planning like the first step to be a app that we can branch and create wiki election on a part of it, but then also create the together tech, like the list of projects and the work done and, and that yeah. whole thing. Um, I don't know if there's any, anything around like sort of de deciding what the MVP might look like more on like the, the together tech side, like wh what do we feel would be useful that we could actually get people to start using? What do we think is maybe a more important feature during the whole quarantine? Like to actually sort of plan out what would the first version of a together tech app what should it be able to do? What do we think, especially right now, people being at home and maybe not having work to do, especially if you were laid off, but still want to mm -hmm. you know, do stuff, um, what that part of it might look like. So do we want to do a project raising on Together Tech? With our, we'll be the, both the people who own the project <laughs> and the people talking about it, but like I think we're good at that. Yeah. To do yeah. together tech app to figure out an MVP for together tech to put yeah. projects, which is a bit unique because we haven't really done like any MVP actual data, right? Like, what what do they need? But that might be the like the next evolution in the project raising is you have a solution raising, you have a project raising, and then there's like the next step where it's I've actually kind of started something or I'm about to start something. And the actual rubber hit the road, mm -hmm. do, doing stuff. So, you know, does someone see the scheduler that they tagged us all on? I want to say his name's Marcius. Yeah. I haven't seen what he what he ended up building yet. I saw some of these screenshots. I haven't looked too far into it because I'm not that into like the that part of the scheduling. I more want the scheduling like for the project side, which is sort of part of the yeah. thing. But that, that will branch off into this together tech and then whatever you make for the topic based thing. Put it in private chat. I guess they're having a public group. Okay. I'm going to see if I can use it for um, the solution raisings, which oh, I don't yeah. know because yeah. they're not like to say solution raising then just put it in brackets that we'll be recording it, right? Like it'll be live or rec live right. and recorded. Like yeah. it's not. Which that should probably be a flag on the meeting that you're suggesting. Like, I'm suggesting a noon one. Oh, and I want to record these as an ongoing thing. So if you say you yeah. want to participate, be, be, be aware of that. Absolutely. I'm going to play. Well, I only just saw it. He only posted it like two hours ago. I only just saw it like 45 minutes ago. I'm like, I'm in a different state. I can't read through this, but it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. Like, I definitely took note like, oh, damn, we have I actually have a coder coding stuff now. Cool. That is very cool. Which is part of the so, thing that sort of made me so, like, so, yeah, sorry. I guess I can start. <laughs> just that is what we're going to do tomorrow then is talk about an MVP for the meta project together tech because we should probably put up a thing we should not we probably we are going to put up a thing on the solution on the projects page the game b projects page for this is the time it's at 9 a.m right tomorrow's is at 9 a.m not the 2 p.m yeah. one yeah okay 
which will be 10 a.m. my time, but that's fine. <laughs> Since I'm in a different time zone at the moment. It's so hard because my computer's at my normal in, oh. at Vancouver and I keep like doing the wrong cha time change in my head. But anyway, I was half an hour late to the game B Coffee House that happens yesterday, day before yesterday, um, because of that, but not the point. Yeah, so writing up what it is we're doing and then putting up, do you want to do that, Adriel? Because I think you'll be able to communicate what it is we're actually doing with an MVP and the meta project better. Um, sure, yeah. Let me add that to my right. and then just the report to get. Kind of switched into a project meeting or a, a board meeting a little bit here, but that's fine. I think we talked about our projects and what they can do in the pandemic. And then doing... Um, why wait till next week? The world's happening so rapidly. Are you frozen? No, I saw you blink. You're not frozen. Um, uh, we need to organize the YouTube page. The YouTube, like, actually make it look slightly more professional with a banner and a logo and a more also broken down into solution raising, project raising. That, right. um, yeah, I don't have access to the actual right. YouTube. And plus okay. doing the descriptions and adding stuff and doing and doing that. If I can get access to your YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, but you're the one who created it. Uh, if there is like a user password, okay. then I can yeah, I'll, see if you can send me the username that, 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 that you use on there. I'll see if I, I, I imagine there's probably some ability to add moderators and stuff like that. I'd be shocked. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, there probably is. All right. Because like a lot of the big, you, you, like even just YouTubers, they have a full team behind them that does stuff. So I would have think it's true. Probably They've solved this. They've solved that that issue. My hands are so dry. Maybe that's the that's the source. It's like nothing can even live on them. There's like a desert. That's the whole plan. Yeah, I haven't had that bad because I mean I wash my hands like when I you know I'm about to go outside or when I come back, but I don't do it that often. So mm -hmm. all right. I think we're all all pretty tired from what's going on in the world. Should we say goodbye to YouTube and Facebook and call it slightly short? Sure. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys. See big... people tomorrow morning for the project raising, and uh, just to let everyone know, this is our new time. We're doing the Friday ones at noon Pacific Standard Time, not 11 a.m. An hour later than it was before, for our schedules. All right.